Mr. Police, how are you and the family doing, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Uh, had a bit of a quiet Christmas. We've been a bit poorly. I think there's been a bit of lurgy going around the, the country. Right. Haven't we? But recovered a bit now. So, yeah, looking forward to 2023, mate. Really happy. Yeah, I bet you are, mate. So, before we get stuck into your story, Ian, where was home for you and who lived at home with you as a kid? So, yeah, I, was, I come from a family. I got brother and sister. Uh, Mum's still with us. Dad passed away a few years ago. Got brought up in Swinton locally. Uh, and spent all my all my life here virtually. So uh, went to Moorside High School, Grosvenor Old Junior School, and then uh, played my amateur rugby at Folly Lane. Uh, right. And then signed straight from Salford as a eighteen year old, I think, from Folly, and was there for uh, twelve years, whatever it was, thirteen. Yeah. 20. Right. So we'll rewind a little bit. So you're in a football mad city, aren't you? Mm. As as a young lad, mate. So what side of the of the colour chart are you? I was football mad. If I'm dead on this. Yeah. Yeah, United uh, fan. Yeah, My brother was a man. fan. Still is. He's still a City fan. So we had a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of hassle in the house on Derby Day. Uh, <laughs> I actually, I actually got stopped playing uh, football at school because I wouldn't play rugby. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wasn't mad for rugby when I was a, uh, at high school. Uh, yeah. And he stopped me playing football because I wouldn't play rugby. And they also seen something in me as a rugby player, but I was really good at. I was really thought I was going to make a professional uh, football player at one stage. Yeah. And then uh, after leaving school, my mates had come down to Folly. And uh, I never looked back, really, from, from rugby. I, I, I did enjoy it. I was just really hell-bent on making a, a career out of football at the time. But uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen. And, and rugby yeah. was there waiting for me. So it took me about... It only took me... It was about 18 months before I signed professional for Salford. from starting, really. I was going to say, going in blind, really, you on it and... Yeah, yeah. It was bizarre. absolutely bizarre. I remember coming home at, after some matches, and I used to play. Used to play open age on the Saturday, and then play under 18s, under 19s as we grew older. Uh, yeah. On Sunday, I mean, you just didn't care. Then you played two games in two days. It was brilliant. Bounce um, back ability, wild. Yeah, it's, yeah. What, what you what you what you do, and you want, and obviously a few drinks in between games as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah. part of the fun as, as, as an amateur isn't it but I remember coming yeah. up and my dad was saying you, you, you know you're getting some you're getting some attention some attraction here from scouts because we had a pretty good team I think out of Follies under 18s team 19s team I think that 13 ended up signing either pro or semi-pro or whatever at the time right. so it was quite a good team and there was a lot of scouts used to watch us and uh, yeah it happened very quickly really if I'm honest yeah. didn't look back really from, from starting at Folly to you know, going right through my playing career, it was good. Enjoyed it. Yeah. So would you would you have played football club wise as well, or was was school yeah. it really town team type football? Yeah. Uh, I played at a club called with United. I think they call Monton Amateurs now in Worcester. Right. And, uh, I played for donkeys years and loved it. Yeah. Loved it. it made town team county level, I think, at the time. But yeah, it was never, yeah. looking back, never really going to make it. And there's not a lot of people do, is there? So no, that's it. Yeah, and I imagine it. Like, I, I don't want to drag the other cord into you, but I'll, I'll mention it to you in a bit because I've played both. And, mm. like, certain levels in rugby union get a little bit clicky, mate. I imagine football's a bit like that as well. Yeah, very much so. And I played yeah. rugby union when I finished. I played for a couple of years at Swinton, Lions, at yeah. Salford, and then I went to uh, Burnley's rugby union and played there. Oh, yeah. Years just to get the, uh, the other side of it, really, because I'm not one of them people who... You know, who, who say don't watch rugby union? I quite like watching. I'm hopefully going to one of the Six Nation games in a few weeks. Actually, yeah. so I don't quite like it. I'm not. I'm not that type of person who say, "Oh, don't watch it. It's rubbish." I know the standard of, of club rugby union is probably not the best compared to what I think we've got at Super League. Yeah. Uh, but I do enjoy. It. I enjoyed my time playing rugby union. Uh, yeah. I really did, and I have respect for both coaches. I really do. Yeah, no, I do myself. It's just like like you touched on there. The, the certain levels. You don't, or I never found it with rugby league. Not that I was, I was brilliant, but I played good enough for it to to see what the gauge was like in both courts. If that yeah, makes sense. Absolutely, yeah. So, how does the scouting system work then, mate? Was it through your dad, like you mentioned? And the years gone by, these, uh, yeah, I think clubs, clubs still have them. You know, we we've managed to build a little network up of scouts now, so it's pretty similar. Yeah, you know, scouts in various areas, uh, watching various. Teams and it's a lot of it's word of mouth. Uh, it still is. Yeah. Uh, obviously, like the bigger the club, the more scouts they can have, and, and, yeah. and you can see that with some of the recruitment that goes on. 
you know, in Super League clubs, and we're, we're not as fortunate as, as other clubs, obviously. So we have to be really smart what we do. But some of the stuff we've been doing recently on our pathway, even though we haven't got a Cat One Academy, uh, has been really good. And we've been sort of like recognised now, and we can actually have some under 18s and under 16s games, which we did last year. We have a couple more this year. Yeah. And we sort of like, obviously, we're picking up the players who, you know, the other clubs don't really want to take. And but that, but that's been good because we've managed. Even through the reserves team, the new reserves set up, you know, six of them reserves lads made their debuts, Super League debuts last year, which I was yep. really proud of. And it was circumstances a little bit that made that happen. But, you know what, they played and they played well and they made us very proud as a club. So uh, it's very important you get you have your scouting mechanism. It's very important you have your pathways. I am still keen on not stripping out of the community game. I think, I think as yep. a professional game, I, I do believe it against the voices of others. And I'm happy to have the argument that I do think we strip away too much out of the community game uh, as clubs. Uh, and I think we should seriously look at that going forward with AMG. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I have ideas about that and others do and others disagree with me. Uh, but And that's life, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there's certainly a... For me, there's a model out there for regional academies, uh, but all clubs have got on board, get on board with that and that won't be an easy task. But... I think uh, he's definitely a model in an independently run regional academy where, because as a kid, I wanted to play for like Salford Boys, even rugby league, yeah. which even football was to play for Salford Boys. And that's sort of like, I know things have changed, yeah. I get that. But if you can get that ambition through your youth coming up to want to play for their town team or their regional team, I think that's a really strong uh, ask of, of, of a person to want to do that. Uh, and it's representing your hometown, your home county, whatever way you want to do it. So I think there's still definitely a model out there that we should look at as a game and not keep taking as many kids away from the community game because the community clubs are struggling. Uh, yeah. I think we could pull all that together in the new reimagining ideas from ING, but we'll see what comes of, of all that in 2023. Well, obviously, like I said, I'm from Witness, you're from Swinton, South of Greater Manchester, we're both proud of where we're from. Mm. The desire... The desire will definitely be there from a young lad from Swinton and Salford and certainly from Witness to play for Swinton and Salford and Witness. So yeah, if, and, and if, it, yeah. You know, I've always said, it, you mentioned it before, it, it's Salford's a footballing city, really, if I'm honest. Uh, although I think we've made great strides in changing that thought process with, with some of the you know, the finals and the successes we've had yeah. over the last few years. So I, I can see and feel it changing. Mm. see kids on the street a lot more wearing uh, kits and I go you know in the local parks and I can see him playing with rugby balls which which you know, I know 10 years ago 12, 15 years ago it wasn't the same no. now it wasn't visible but it is now and we need to keep pushing that but it is difficult in a, in a football strong city uh, but I think we're having a good go at it as a club we've worked bloody hard over the last few years to make it happen uh, it, it won't be easy going forward either but you know, I think some of the noises we're making and the way we, you know, we're playing a really good brand of rugby league. I think that's good for for the city, and with yeah. with everybody's backing, we can certainly give this give this city something to be proud of as, as a sporting club. And I think that's where we're trying to head. Oh, definitely. You sort of side on the up, are you? You can see that, and we'll, hopefully we will touch on a little, damn little bit of recruitment and getting into the thing. But I think your vision might be a certain way because without being rude, a lot of clubs have outside people running it, don't they? You've been in the community game, you've managed to crap the pro game and it's you've you've managed to keep the humility between the two. Yeah, yeah exactly. because you've experienced it and a lot of others haven't have they and are they from other sporting backgrounds and things, I think it makes a big difference, that you? Yeah, it probably could do. A lot of people yeah. do that. It's, it's hard for me when, when you're on the inside to to, to look at that and, and I don't I, I never get I never get carried away each season, you know. But. Yeah. You've still got to work hard. You've still got, like you say, you've still got to be humble. You've still got to remember where you've come from. It's very important for me. Mm. Uh, and I think the effort you put on put in is obviously heightened when you've had, you know, like so I played for the club for twelve years. So, so you know, cut me in half. You've got, you've got. You bleed Salford, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, and that's just that's just the way it is. So it's easy. And I've always said, you know, working at this great club has is, is always been my dream job. So. Hopefully that'll continue for a while, but yeah. we're all desperate for success, as in as in win a trophy, uh, and that's what we're all geared up to do. But I think 
uh, you know, other, other club structures is, is not something that I take that much notice of or interests me. I'm, I'm solely zoned in on what we do and what we try and achieve as a club, which is very important. But it does help when you've got people around you and there's a few in the business now in the organisation that are sort of through and through, so that helps. Yeah. Uh, I've always said it, if, if you're grafting life and you're, and you're a hard worker, you'll get your rewards. Yeah, you know, 100%, mate. So we'll rewind then. So you get asked to go to Folly Lane. And mm. for listeners and viewers that might not know, it's one way in, one way, in, one way out, isn't it? Mm. And you are right, in, in an atmosphere once you get beyond that fence. So how was it when you first rock up and you're there for your first session? Is it something good. you enjoyed? Good, yeah, the lads were great. And it was, it, it was good. There was no pressure. It was like a more social side than anything. Yeah. But we had a great little team. We had some lads, rugby lads up there who were playing, who'd played for years and I was just sort of like in and out with my school team and wasn't yeah. that bothered just going because my best mate was there. Right. And Anyway, quickly fell in fell in love with it, mate, if I'm dead honest with you. And within right. within six months, we're playing against, obviously, Lamworthy and, and, and uh, Earlham and Eccles, who are local rivals. And there was a lot yeah. of... We had, we had, to be fair, we, we had a great... Uh, when, when then clubs merged into the town team, we had some really great games with Oldham and Wigan. And so it was a it was a really good time for local amateur sport. I remember, it, you know, we used to have packed touchlines and yeah. a lot of community clubs still get that. But I remember, you know, for the first time, certainly at Folly Lane, we had, we had you know, packed touchlines on a Sunday morning watching us play. Yeah. Uh, and that, I ended up getting picked for, for Lancashire amateurs at the time, which was massive, you know, playing against Yorkshire and Cumbria and that little... Tri party cup thing, and that was huge. Yeah. I mean, that was my first taste of proper representative football, and it shocked me how quick it was, how hard and tough it was. So, I remember going home after the game thinking, Wow, this is this is this is yeah. serious. So, you noticed that straight away, yeah, straight away, yeah, yeah. There was a step up from just turning out on a Sunday pitch there yeah. to going. I can't remember where we played now, but it was a really nice facility, and the game was quick. Not as physical because it isn't when it's as quick. Uh, yeah, not thuggery going on and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, and then I, I hadn't even obviously signed for Salford yet, but I noticed the mark difference from just playing local amateur to, to to a bit of a representative game playing for playing for Lancashire. I think I still got my jersey somewhere. So it was a very proud moment for me and the family that playing for I think it was Lancashire under 19s, I think against yeah. York and Cumbria, and that was good. So that was a good breeding sort of taste of my first. Uh, Hitting sort not the big time, but making it to a level where you can definitely feel and see that oh, you've got to be a bit better than what you are, mate. If you want to make it in this game, yeah, yeah. And so the selection process would have been because you've impressed with your club side, you've been yeah. invited down, yeah. The yeah. Lancashire scouts, so the right. amateur scouts going watching the amateur game, uh, that's yeah. It. And when so when you're in that environment, mate, how was you in a new changing room? Fine, yeah, f- fine. It's it's banter, isn't it? The changing room. Yeah. If you can survive in a changing room, you can survive anyway. You'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good way of putting it. Actually, yeah, it's a good league, yeah. It? You know, it's something that uh, you do miss when you when you when you pack in playing the the, the banter and, and the and the crack and long. You know, not long as everything stays on the right side of the jovial and that. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We, we had some great times. We had some great times on and off the pitch, and that's what. Yeah. I think that's what amateur playing amateur, whatever sport is all about, enjoying it. Yeah. Your mates, you know, we had a beer afterwards and a bite to eat or whatever. It was just good times, fond memories, and uh, sort of like changes a bit when you sign pro. You, you, yeah, you've got. And I, I probably lost a lot of mates as a result of that in a way, but you, you have a decision to make when you when you're signing like that. You either you know, you know, going out on a Friday and Saturday night. What stopped it stopped for me, you know, and we played winter then. So yeah. that's it when we played on Boxing Day and we played on New Year's Day, for example. So your Christmas and New Year's, for example, were just a write-off. You were you were down and dirty in the pro game. So yes, and if you wanted to make it, you have to dedicate yourself. So uh, but I look back with fondness from from the amateur game, definitely. Yeah. And was there ever a moment in um in then step ups, which we'll touch on in a minute, because you've just mentioned your sign pro. Did, did you feel you you belong, or was there a time when you thought, "Am I good enough"? Yeah, I think I think I think most professional sports, I mean, imposter syndrome, and I think I think most sportsmen mentally, you know, question themselves 
should, should this be happening to me? That's part of your, I think, your mental toughness that you that you work out eventually. Yeah. Um, but there's definitely moments in your career where I remember, what, and again, I got picked to play for Lancashire at professional level. I think we played at Headingley versus Yorkshire. And at the time, we were going well as a club. I think we just I think we might have got promoted into Super League. And uh, I think I think I played in the pack with like Richie Ayres on, in the back row. I was second row with Dennis Betts, and we had Andy Platt, uh, Martin Dermot, Ucky, and it was just you know Bobby Goulding and Sean Edwards was my half backs, and I was like, wow, you know, this is like yeah, talented, isn't it? Yeah, and, you yeah. know, Rianley, Gary Schofield, you know, playing on the other team against for Yorkshire. I'm thinking, you know, should I really be here? So you do question, you do question yourself uh, yeah. mentally, but. Mm. Once that kickoff, or once that whistle goes and the kickoff, it's just you just get on with it, don't you? And you've got yeah. to for yourself because if you don't, you'll you'll soon get trodden all over and you'll die. So yeah, and it'll pass you by, mate. If in it, you're too much. Yeah. yeah, I remember that game clearly because you sort of like when you, when you look back in your career and, and, and listen, you know, we, we had some great players at Salford throughout my career. In my twelve years, I've come across some fabulous players and some great teams. But I remember I got uh, I got a pass off Sean Edwards at the first five, ten minutes or something. And normally playing for Solver, the defense would be like virtually off by the time you get the ball. But I actually had some space when I got the ball. I'm thinking, wow, I've got, I've got space here. And that's, that's the quality of the other players. Yeah. You know, that little again, that step up with, with, with Bobby Goulding and Sean Edwards, which are, and they put me through a gap. I'm thinking, and I remember running thinking, gee, where's this? Is mad this. I've never had this much space for I you. like it. <laughs> it's easy. This is all right, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, when you get home and you reflect, you think that's because of the quality of player that you're playing with there. It's probably not you. Yeah. You're, all right, you're, <laughs> you're running the right hole there, but you've got yeah. you've caught the ball, but they've they've made the gap for you. But it was a good experience for me. Uh yeah, yeah and some and again something to look back with with fondness, yeah. Yeah. And was you someone did did you need an early touch here? Or was you happy to bide your time? Yeah, if you, if you, and again, could you play? Could you play for like twelve or whatever. You, depends what mood you're in. Sometimes, yeah. and, and, and I think somebody sent me the Lancashire Cup final when we played Widnes. Mm. Uh, I think it was it ninety two or something like that. And I, wa- I watched the game fast forwarding and just watching it the other day. And I haven't, I haven't watched it much since. But they're a great team, and, and I remember in that game, I definitely thought before the game. I'm going to get hold of that ball early, you know, yeah. and make, try and make me a mark. And fortunately, it did. I think it had a half decent game, and we played against a great team of fire Jonathan Davis, Devro, Kurt Sorensen. It was a great team. We put up a good, good performance. We got beat at the end, but I, I also yeah. won it. But uh, yeah, you, you saw, sort of like, think, get an early touch, settle your nerves. And if you remember in them days, there used to be a good ruckus as well at the first scrum. Yeah. That always used to happen and get a bit of. Get a bit of you know, get a bit of the fire out of your bellies, and the referees used to say, "Right, calm down, let's play a bit of rugby now." So yeah. there's different ways of motivating yourself as a pro, and there still is. It's a lot cleaner now, and it's a lot yeah. more professional and faster than. Even though it's very physical, it's very clean. I think it's a great game to watch, a great sport to watch now. It's hundred you know, percent. Yeah, it's summer rugby it makes a big difference as well. Yeah. So when when you sign it, what? But back then, how, how did the Obviously, you're a hometown boy, so they're already mm. like two 0 up, aren't they? Yeah. But yeah. how does it how does it work? Is it do you go and meet them in a in a pub instead of a coffee shop now? Or <laughs> no, I went to the ground. Actually, it took my dad. My dad come with me. Didn't have an agent. Then all players have yeah. agents nowadays. Went with my dad. Uh, agreed. It, agreed. It, you know, agreed. The signing on fee and then the, the club get a bit of money. The amateur club get a bit of money as well, which right. I think is very important. Uh, and we agreed it within half an hour, probably. We didn't know what Happy we were doing. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't the driver for me, though. That the, yeah. money, the money probably wasn't the driver. Putting a, putting a Salford shirt always a driver, always has been, always will be. It wasn't never about money. That's mm-hmm. that, that's a plus. That was a plus for me. Yeah. That was a plus for me because yeah. within whatever contracts I got, I think I've still got it on somewhere. I got you got so much for you know five games, so much for ten games, yeah. so much for games. I chewed that up within the first year, really. So uh, you've got to remember Sky TV wasn't around then, so there wasn't yeah. that much money in the game either. Uh, I I was still playing when, when Super League came in and Sky came in, So, I, but I was at the back end of my career then. So right. for me, it was never about the money, uh, although it was useful. Uh, yeah. 
And obviously when you went on to winning and losing bonus. And that, I think that's where a lot of the, well, it kept the game going at the time, didn't it? Because, you, you know, if you didn't win, you didn't get that much money. But if you, if you did yeah. win, you went a few bobs. So everybody wanted to win. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a very competitive game at the time. Uh, but yeah, it was done within a matter of half an hour. Uh, John Wilkinson was the chairman then, still still friends with John to, till today. We did it, we signed it, and I was training and playing, I think, the, the, the day after. I think they had a, a reserve, A team, as they called it then, semi final. Yeah. Uh, and I played the day after, I think, and I had a black and got picked in the squad for the first team the following Sunday, which was just, and I think it made me debut within. Within a month of signing, which was rapid, in it? Yeah, it was mad. Yeah. But it was, I think, I think they were in the old second division then. They'd, they'd gone down the year before I'd signed and we got up that year, we got promoted that year. So, but it was great to make my debut and and eventually make, I don't know, whatever, how many appearances I made and captain the club. So it was a, it was a wonderful career. I and the famous Willows as well, mate. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. The play there was beautiful, wasn't it? You know, it was a, yeah. one of them traditional grounds. Uh, yeah. That, you know, Still should be there, but unfortunately isn't. No, the away dressing room weren't too nice. Though. I no, remember playing a Tarty game the home, there. Yeah. The home dressing room wasn't <laughs> better, let me tell you. Used to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Probably a little bit size, but you used to have them sloping. Yeah, they'd that. leak and that. Yeah, yeah, the shed was above you and you could hear the feet and the chanting. And, yeah. and, uh, they, they tried to uh, modernise it over the years, but it wasn't it wasn't big enough to modernise. You no. couldn't be there with it. But it was, it was certainly a... A ground with atmosphere, you know, and, and Norton Park and Knowsley Road yeah. were the same, weren't they? They were all yeah. fabulous grounds to play at. And I was so, I was so, I wouldn't change a thing. I was happy I played in that era because some of the, you know, some of the stadiums that we played at, I know they were they were getting a bit old and decrepit in the time, but they were great to play at. The atmosphere was pretty brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And on and say there's like 5,000 there when really there's probably 12. And yeah, you get all of that. Yeah. yeah, you hear it, you feel it. Yeah, you do. Yeah. No, so in them early days, mate, was anyone put their arm around you and look after you, or did you did you not really need that? No, you didn't get it. No. Yeah. <laughs> the culture's very different, wasn't it? Yeah, like viewers and listeners need to remember got, that really. Yeah, I got a few injuries early doors for whatever reason. Probably because when I probably look back on it, I probably I probably probably wasn't in the the right physical shape to, to to play professional rugby for whatever reason. I was just there and, and it was happening. Yeah. Uh, I had my shoulder reconstructed and my ankle reconstructed in the first couple of years, so that that delayed me. And that I remember training on my own for what felt like it probably was as well, forever, was months and months and months and months, if not years, because the two injuries. And I remember Kevin Ashcroft was my coach at the time, saying, "Don't worry, you'll be all right. This happens. This is rugby. It happens. Mm-hmm. Keep your head right." So yeah, you just touch bases with the coaches, your family are there in the background, aren't they, to support yeah. my views, but. Uh, no, it's pretty much, you know, the, I think the camaraderie amongst the players was was close then, you know, it was very good. It was, you had to look after each other, so the teams were very close. And it, they still are to this day, but yeah. yeah, there was no, and it's great that we've got player welfare now in the game to help you with every, you know, education and your mental health yeah. and well-being. So I'm, 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 I'm really pleased that we've got that in the game. I'm really passionate about the delivery of our education to our players and making sure... Uh, them and the families are all right. That's very important for us as a game. So I am an advocate of all that. But we, you didn't yeah. have that then. It was a uh, I can't think, imagine think or swim job, mate. And yeah. I think I remember playing against like play whole KR away one night on a Thursday night, and they had like Phil Hogan and David Watkins playing, and it was like I'm only 19, 20, and these guys are you know t- top end of the twenties, early thirties, maybe. And Season bros, big human beings. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy but you know what do they say it makes you stronger doesn't it things like it that it does so did that happen quite early on Ian yeah yeah them big injuries so how yeah. does a young lad who is about to live the dream get mm. to grip for the fact that it's pretty key maybe back then some of them can be career ending depending where you're at in your life can't they very like immobilising and you, pr- you don't want to see lads, uh, but you semi up someone does, so you're not on your bill in the gym. How do you get over that and, and what's think, the rehab like? I think, yeah, you know, strength and conditioning, physio, medical now is absolutely spot on, you know. Yeah. And, and I've looked at other sports as well and, and, and we're up there. It's very, it's very good. And, you know, 
back then we didn't have the machinery that, that, that the physios have got now, you know. I think we had an ultrasound at Salford, that was it, an ultrasound machine. And a sponge. Whatever, oh, and a yeah. sponge, whatever <laughs> you got, that, that was your options, which one do you yeah. want? So, no, if, you, if you're getting injuries now, and, and we, you know, we've had them in and, you know, I, I've let players go off the back of their injury record and that's, it's that sport. It's not just rugby yeah. that comes in sport, and it's never the best. And I feel I do feel so sorry for them. Uh, but sometimes they have to take a step back to come back again. I think so. I mean, that's happened yeah. a few times. But they get I think every player gets pretty much well looked after now. Yeah. But a lot of it's down to yourselves. And when I was saying I was training on my own, I still have that grit and determination to not let the injuries beat me and win. And I think you've got to have that within you. You've got to listen to what the experts tell you to do and build whatever muscles or, or diet that they give you to, to help you get back to playing again. And that's I certainly did that when I was playing. I, I remember I had a couple of good Aussies around me at the time, good players, and they were saying, you know, make sure you get in the gym and do your bench pressing because that was like, and then the rowing, we had big things on rowing at the time, which was brand new because I think it was it Steve Redgrave, the Olympic rower brought some, oh, yeah. all this rowing training out and that came into the game pretty quick. So as long as you look after yourself and listen to people, you can get yourself back from from injuries. Rehab is very important, but the players have got to be able to do it themselves as well. No, they have. You can say it, isn't it? Take the horse to water, but you can't make them drink, can you? Absolutely. That's an uncoachable, that, isn't it? It's, they you've just need to have drive. it. Yeah. You've got that drive and that ambition in you to make sure you come back stronger. Yeah. And obviously your role's drastically changed now, which we will touch on later, but as a player, the, the chats that well, we'll we'll have a little talk about later. Was you someone that expected the direct chat? Was you happy for someone to be just straight and honest with you? Or yeah, and that's till to this day. I think yeah, rugby players are smart as well. They, they can see through you. Don't 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 bull. Just just yeah yeah. I think as a player, I always wanted that. Tell me straight. If I've had a rubbish game, tell me. Yeah. Not right. Tell me. Praise me. If I'm not doing something good, tell me. And I'll work on it. And that's what I think. I think that's definitely the case to this day. You know, just be honest with the players and I think they respect that even more. Yeah, especially maybe because you've been in that situation yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah you, you, you know what you want to hear. Mm. Sometimes it's not good what you're hearing, but you, you you want to know about it. Sometimes you might put it to the back of your mind and think I've got away with that this week, but you, you know it's going to come back. It happens. Yeah, yeah. So you'd rather so, be and honest with Yeah, no, 100%, mate. And I think that shows in how much... Players, ex-players, fans speak so highly of you. Mm. We, it's because you're a pretty direct and honest club, aren't you? And yeah, yeah we got to, to be quite honest. Yeah, but you are. Yeah, because these books are cliches that you have to say to Sky and BBC and the Championship Premier Sports or whoever wants to listen. Go behind that and walk away from the mic, and the chat's still there waiting to be had, isn't it? At the side of the pitch or whatever. And, so you've played in some big occasions, mate, and I ask everybody this, and these cup final weeks, I know because you used to play a lot more often, didn't you? You'd play like midweek games and stuff, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, we did. They're not just ordinary weeks, though, Ian, are they? And how did you deal with them weeks? And how was your first one? It's like, like you, I mentioned the, the Boxing Day and the New Year's Day. That was a, that yeah. was a tough period to get over. But again, and we didn't have the facility... No, we didn't have the facilities that you got to, to today. We didn't have the the strength and conditions telling you what to do and what you know. Stop, stop! You've run too much now, and mm. well, he'll get an injury if you carry on doing that with him. So we didn't have all that. We, you were just, and it was winter on it as well. So it was, yeah. it was the grounds were a lot. of The grounds were pretty, you know, muddy, mm. uh, which I was happy with because I brought it brought every other player down to my speed. So. <laughs> horses for horses, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> But you, yeah, you, it was a, we always had busy schedules. The lads have got busy schedules now. Yeah. But I look at the game now and there's not a chance of me playing to this standard that they play at now. Not, but then again, as people say, you know, pe- athletes evolve, don't they? Full, when, you know, yeah. when Super League became full time, you could see the athletes appearing more and more. Um, so we've got some wonderful athletes in the game and they, co- and they do cope with it. Uh, I'm probably on their side about playing too many in a year. Yeah, but I do see the club side of it where we've got to get the income in as well. Otherwise, you know, we don't pay the wage. Exist. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's that balance you've got to find. Uh, hopefully, the next TV deal will be good. Yeah, and, and allow us to strategize even more as a game. Uh, but yeah, I think I think 
I think you learn to cope with it as a player. You know, you just, and it is an old cliche, every game as it comes, but you do end up doing that. You just focus yeah. on that game. Tomorrow's tomorrow, and, and you work it out basically as you go through the season. Yeah, especially as to take them fast. Like, don't get me on the iron now, but back then, like you said, you were yeah. playing midweek weekends. You had loads of cup comps, didn't you? And yeah, we did. There was a lot. There was yeah. a lot of cup comps. Yeah, the John Play yeah. and the Lancashire Cup, obviously the Yorkshire Cup, and yeah, there was a lot of competitions. Yeah, there was. Yeah. yeah. And how big was the squad then? Ian, was it was rotation a thing then, or you had a really strong uh, A team because as they get, you know, they were just playing for winning, losing money. There was probably no contract money there. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, it's a good question, actually. Probably, probably similar to what size squads are today. Maybe not as big. Mm. Maybe not as big. Because you know, you had two subs, Ian, didn't you? Yeah, you did as well. Yeah. I'll say this to some of the lads, and they're like, what? Two and it weren't rolling either. Oh, mate, Once you, you were you, off, you were off, weren't you? Off. You, got yeah. an, you get an injury, and you've done your two subs, you're staying on. I remember yeah. I dislocated my shoulder in one, one game. Couldn't go off because we didn't, we didn't have a sub. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, to the next person to you, just help me out and help me defend here because it's yeah. off. So, yeah, it was, it was t- <laughs> when you look back at the two sub rule, it was just... It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it was what it was at the time, so you just, you've just got to get on with it, I mean. Yeah, and how, how did you find the build-up to a cup final as a player? Yeah, yeah. it's the same as any. You're, you're nervous, aren't you? You're very nervous. Yeah. You're very nervous. Uh, I think... And I say, you know, I've, I've got my daughter's into swimming quite a lot. And I say to her, how you handle your your mind and, and, and your, your nervousness before a game or, or an event is is key to it. It's key to it. And it's half the battle, isn't it? If you're not yeah. nervous, there's something wrong. Uh, yeah. But you can't be too relaxed either. So you, and I think the older you get, the more experience you get as, as an athlete in any sport, the more you learn how to cope. Yeah. On, on, with big pressure and I, listen I did play for, for Great Britain unfortunately anything like that but uh, pl- playing a playing a game of, of, of Super League any any level of rugby league is tough you've got to be yeah. in the right space mentally because if you're not certainly in, in the 8 90s 2000 you, you're going to get you're going to get a good hiding you know you're going to somebody's yeah. going to co- drop you if you're not on the ball so uh, it was it was always a did always struggle with with, with nerves, uh, but just once you're out there, you're fine. It's, weird. Yeah. it's bizarre. It's bizarre. You just everything's forgot. As soon as you run out of that tunnel, uh, you it's go, just another game, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, oh, good. You're good. Yeah, yeah. Everything goes away. You don't. You're not even thinking about how nervous I'm. You're thinking about uh, who's going to knock me head off today, or, or, <laughs> or yeah, how, how can I score today, or how can I have a good game today? Different thoughts. Totally different thoughts to what you've thought about. The night yeah. before, or the build up into the game. I remember somebody's an old pro said to me once, because I was probably looking nervous sat, sat in the dressing rooms. He said, Please, you don't play a game an hour before the kickoff. Yeah. Easy with, said than done, but it's clever. Yeah. It, it always stuck with me. It all yeah. stuck with me. So sometimes when I was feeling really anxious or whatever, it's, you're all right. It's another hour away yet. Yeah. Just chill your boots. And that yeah. sort of like stuck with me for a while. Yeah. So as you roll now, You've had a successful couple of years. We're not done on your playing career, by the way, but how do you, does it feel the same? Except, thankfully, you're not having to lace the boots up against some fit yeah, fellas. But it, 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 Listen, it's it's easy sat in the stand. I've always said that. I said that yeah. was in your armchair, sat in the stand. It's dead easy rugby, isn't it? It's totally different when you're on that pitch. Yeah, but, yeah I enjoy watching the lads. It's great. And it's, you know, when you, when you do have a little bit of success, you know, obviously we've got to the Grand Final and Challenge Cup and semi-final last year, we were just unlucky. It's great to see because it's something that you've been a part of building. It's a different feeling because, you know, when you come off that pitch and you've played and you've won, that's the best feeling in the world. And you're you're around your mates and your boys. You know, it's it's yeah. that, that's irreplaceable. But I've I, I enjoy, I've enjoyed being on the other side of it. It's, it's nice because there's no way I you know there's no way I wanted to play when I finished playing. That was me done. I, I was happy with what I'd done. Tried to, yeah. do. but I had no regrets. Not, absolutely nothing. Nothing. Yeah, just at peace with it, mate. Yeah, yeah dead right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I was, I was dead comfortable with it, uh, and I'd given everything mentally. I think I read Jonathan Davis said one one in his book. I think I'm sure he put something along. It's not having like at the time you like you 
your Sunday lunches and things like that, because we all used to play on a Sunday. Yeah. Mentally, in the end, your family time and missing out on all that breaks you in the end. It's probably not your mind because you still you can still get there. The body starts to let you down a little bit. But yeah. mentally, after so many years, it, it wears you down, definitely. Yeah. Right, so we talked about the cup finals and that. Is there any you capped in the club, which is massive for a local lad, isn't it? You've you, you led from the front, you led from the front in big occasions, you've scored in big occasions. Did you keep memorabilia like you mentioned? Did you keep a couple of things or yeah, I was getting the Christmas tree down before and I found some bits and pieces actually. We've got we've got an old boys group WhatsApp and, and I found yeah. Dane Anson who used to play for us. He played for Samoa back in the day. And yeah. I found his Samoa shirt that he'd give me and it was in my loft. So yeah, I've got some bits and pieces up in my loft. Yeah. Uh, old photos, programme, testimonial brochure, things like that. An old yeah. shirt I've got, I've got my first Super League shirt still up there. I'll probably put them put them somewhere in my house one day, but uh, yeah. I've got my medals somewhere from the Lancashire Cup finals and the, winning the Championship League 2 and stuff like that and playing for Lancashire, obviously. I've got them in a drop. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not one for... I'm not one for sort of like looking back too much. It, that you know, it was a it was great at the time. I, I loved it and I'm thankful it happened to me. Uh, but I'm all about, I'm all about looking forward On to the next. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I'm, that's how I'm built. That I like to look forward. I like to. That's fair enough. I don't dwell really, but I, I I do look back at my time and think, yeah, you were lucky. You were lucky to to have that journey. But it was a great journey. It wasn't always yeah. rolling. You know, we, we had some tough times at Salford. We did. Yeah. Uh, but one thing we had was was a good culture on the place, and that's what we've tried to build here, really, to the modern day. We've had a good culture. We all help each other. It's a Salford motto that we look after our own, and we try and we try and yeah. get that throughout the throughout the club, really. Right. So, was there anything that really stood out from your time at Salford that not only are you grateful for, it can be positive and negative, mate, can't it? It can be whatever way you want to look at it, but something that people might overlook that you think was pretty pivotal to your time as a player there? Yeah, I don't... I think the th- the most things I'm, I'm, I was... I sort of like set myself from, from signing, from signing from folly, I set myself some little goals, which I still do to this day, really, is, right, make your debut. Make your first yeah. debut was in my mind. As soon as I signed, make your debut. That happened pretty quick. Oh, that's good, right? Okay, what next? Well, you need to play like 10, 13 games now. Managed to do that twenty. Not contractually, I was getting money for it as well, which is it was always a bother. Yeah. So I was, I was setting my objective with a with a with a with a eye on the on, on the money in the background as well. Yeah. But then it was like right, okay. So after you played 20, 30 game, what's the next goal? Uh, and it was you know to become a regular first teamer, but also at some stage to captain the club, which. Uh, happened. I, I remember the day clearly when Kevin Tamati pulled me aside. The trainer said, "Right, I'm, I think Mick Warrell, Mick Warrell has just left and gone somewhere. He was a great player, Mick, a tourist captain, great uh, played for Great Britain and was captain of the club yeah. at the time. And he left and went somewhere. I think, oh, it might have been John Pendlebury, somebody like that. And I thought to myself, well, I might have a bit of a chance here of being captain. And he shouted me over. So it was a very, really, really proud moment for me. Yeah. I think it was, was captain for like, four, three or four or five years, whatever it was. Uh, and that was a, that was a massive honour for me. That. Uh, and hopefully that, that alter your game at all, sorry. Yeah, it's hard to say. Hard to say, really. Is it alter? You, I think you. Oh, feel, did you see the game different? Yeah, I think yeah. You, the responsibility on you hmm. uh, becomes more heightened. I think, and I think uh, I'm not saying hurting, uh, losing hurt hurt me more because I was captain. Probably did. Probably did. Yeah. Probably felt it more because you do become more involved with the coaching. And obviously, yeah. the, the 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 directors of the club, you you know, you you were party to meetings and discussions and right. So you're a bit of the middle man there, mate. Was you? Yeah, yeah you're, you're in it that that level that like any working career in it. As you progress, you and you get sort of like promoted or you climb the ladder. You sort of like you know learn to appreciate things. So I think the responsibility changes you as a player. Uh, yeah, and, and I guess when thinking back, when you when you're down and out as a team, maybe in a game, you, you take it on yourself to try and do something that will produce uh, a bit of magic. Yeah, or give words of encouragement for somebody to yeah. be. So various varying different different tactics over the years you use as a captain, uh, and I was surrounded by some some great players as well. So it was 
it was pretty easy. Uh, but it was a great time. It was sort of like, you know, the ambition was to win something, although we never like won Super League. We, you know, we got to the Lancashire Cup finals and we played at Old Trafford twice in the premiership, second division premierships that got us into Super League. And they they were good, they were good times. And I know Especially as a United fan as well. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. the dream come true, playing, playing at Old Trafford. Yeah to win it as well so uh, they were good although it was a second, the old second division titles then but it was, it was still a good standard you know it, yeah. it was just you know I think we played Halifax at the time we were a great team and Keighley and it was the year of Cougar Mania and they were flying at the time so it was you know some good games there uh, and then obviously to get in Super League and stay in Super League and that's what we managed to do yeah uh, and we didn't get relegated after that first year I think when I joined so we, I think we had Virtually many many years in Division One, and and then and then through to Super League. I think the only time we didn't get in Super League when they give the licenses out, and I think uh, we didn't get one. That was when they switched over from winter to summer rugby, so right. we had to win the league in the winter and then win it in the summer to get into Super League, which we did. Uh, yeah, I remember Rob Myler mentioned some of my used play virtually back to back. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, we, did. yeah. We, we went for winter. Had I don't know a couple of months off, maybe if that, you know, but. So we probably have a couple of weeks off, 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 and then back yeah. to training. And you were kicking off in January, February, right through to the summer. But we had a great team then: Andy Platt, Steve Hampson, Sam Panapa, Steve Blakely, Scott Naylor, Nathan Macker. Yeah. We, we, we had a fantastic team then. Uh, we managed to get into Super League. And I think I was coming towards the back of my career then. I think I might have been 31, 32. And I right. knew I was uh, virtually at the end, but it was great to get to the club into Super League, and I think they were there for donkey's years after that. So, right, it's all good. And without you knowing, mate, is is your relationship changing with the likes of match officials? With you mentioned it before, coaching staff, board members, because you're taking on that leadership role. But again, you touched on it a little bit. The game's slightly changing because then little decisions that nine out of ten people overlook, like what do you do with a penalty? What sort of players you put on here? Who you play? And they, they matter, don't they? At the top end of the game. So are you starting to see how a club should look, considering the role you're in now? And yeah, so like, tactically and on, on, on a match day, that's down to the coaches, and, and I would never yeah. get involved in any 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 decisions on the pitch. That's down to, at the moment Paul Roller, Kurt Haggerty, mm. and Kristen Inu, who we've brought on. Oh yeah, sorry. When you were playing, that is not now. Uh, right. Well, no. Yeah, yeah. As a skipper, yeah, you've got to make tough decisions at the right time. You don't always get it right either. Yeah. So uh, decision making's all always come easy to me. To be fair, uh, mm. that's, it's never been a problem to make a, a decision. Sometimes it's not a popular one either that you have to make. But, uh, so be it, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's yeah. always been my attitude. It's always done with the best intentions and, and never personal. Uh, I don't think anyone can complain at that either, Ian, can they? No. You're being direct, honest. No. And, and I've it, always it's... thought, like, that's always been my motto, is just just be honest and straight. Yeah. Some people like it. Some people might disagree with that's their That's their lookout. That's my, but I'm always, I always like to call a spade a spade, really. Yeah. And when you're honest, mate, there's no blurred lines. No. There can't be no Chinese whisper with it, can there? And you won't get caught up in nothing because what you say the first time is exactly what you say the hundredth time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and as you get in, as you get into the back end of your career, mate, is going into anything off the field regarding rugby a thought? Did you have any thoughts for after yeah, well, rugby? I, I, I'd worked, I'd worked for the local authority for uh, many years. Uh, and actually, when they went full time Super League, I chose not to go full time because I was. I was 32, I think. 31, yeah. 32. And I and I had a working career, uh, which I was doing all right at. Yeah. Working alongside the rugby. And uh, it was Andy Gregory at the time, who was my coach, was going mad because I wouldn't go full time. But I knew yeah. physically I'd got one or two super league years in me at, at top. My body, you know, my body was you know, 200 odd games, 250 odd game. My body was coming towards the end of it, and I, but I wanted to yeah. take Super League. Thankfully, I did. Yeah. Uh, but I stayed, I stayed part time. It's bizarre because where the stadium's situated now, uh, Salford City Stadium here down, yeah, Neckles. Uh, we used to train here 
when we first got into Super League. It used oh, to be, did you? Yeah, it used to be pitches uh, with little changing rooms and stuff like that. It's changed dramatically now. So yeah. we used to sort the boys out in work, then come here, train, I don't know, 10 till 1, and then go back to work. So I was I, I was, I was quite busy at the time. I can imagine, yeah. In those days, did I want to be a coach? I never thought about being a coach. It didn't interest me that. There was things that yeah. were at Salford that I won't disclose at the time that I didn't quite, yeah, yeah. I didn't quite like in the background. Uh, certain people put you off. Yeah, it put me off. Yeah. yeah. So, and I and I thought years previous that I, I probably would like to go into it, but I didn't. I chose a career outside rugby, and I did that for you know another twenty, nearly thirty years before I came back six years ago, whatever it is now. So, yeah. Uh, that's flew that then. If it's six years, yeah. that's flew, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it has flown. Yeah, I became a player's agent. Uh, just to get, I had a mate who was a football agent. He was mad at me for ages. Oh, let's get into the rugby league. And I thought, yeah. you know what? I won't mind getting back into that scene again. And it, there was nothing apart from uh, thoughts of enjoyment. I didn't, I didn't want to get into the game. Just maybe, you know, touch Flirt with it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I did, and it, and it escalated from there. Really, I managed to get all the, you know, Mark Sneed's a good example. I, I ended up looking after him. Yeah. So I fans still think I took him away from Salford, but I didn't. <laughs> that was another person who was coach at the time's decision. Uh, but I enjoyed that part of it, but I never wanted to be a coach. Still would never want to be a coach, if I'm honest. But I've enjoyed coming back, doing the rugby side of things at the club. It's been brilliant. It's, it's, it's not mad, because you can see just from speaking to you now, you care about the club, about the people. Mm. You know the game, but you know... As much as you've got to look after a player, a player's got to look after you. That's the business side. Yeah. It so it, there's no shot that you started in that avenue. Mm. But when when you're in that avenue and you're discussing things, did you quite realise how much the game's changed? Were some of the talks petty? Because I imagine they are, you know, between a club and a player, like little daffing. I'm not asking for any T's and C's, but... Just being away from the game for that that time, have mm. you seen a drastic change? Yeah, yeah, but I think in a positive way as well, though. It's, you know, money, yeah. money, money changed the sky, money changed the game, didn't it? You know, let's have it. Of course, it did. Yeah, we all became fully professionals. Which I remember saying to the club at one stage when I was playing. Uh, I think we played Wigan one one warm up game, and they all come out like the sizes of houses. And I'm thinking they're all full-time these and there was a massive advantage over us then at that time I remember going into the club saying I want to go full-time and they're like well we can't we can't afford it and yeah, disappointingly you know we couldn't go full-time so obviously with the, with the Sky money and people getting good money the game's progressed in a positive way I think I think you know even though I think we went through a pretty stagnant stage a few years ago where the game was I'd say bore and it was just very mundane. I think we tried to copy the Australians too much over the years. But I think in the last few years, I think we've got the game back to being an entertaining, entertaining spectacle, what it needs to be. Uh, yeah. And they've copied us a few times, Ian, yeah, which is yeah. nice to see as well. well isn't if, it? You, yeah. if you remember like the Ashes series, I know we didn't win a particular one, but we always used to score the best tries, didn't we? We always yeah. Yeah you know, pull off an amazing try. I know they scored a few against us at the time, but yeah, I think I think the game went through a period of just like, hit it up, hit it up, kick yeah. it up. Hopefully, hopefully, the, st- the style we played last year and others and other clubs yeah. is the way. You've got to entertain, haven't you? It's, it's an entertainment sport. and Yeah, to get bums on seats and then it's about winning, yeah. I suppose, yeah. isn't it? And, yeah, yeah. And, and the pressure's on the coaches. I'm, I'm not saying you, you throw it everywhere. You can't do that. You, your job's to win games. Mm. Uh, but I think we proved in, Rolls and Hags proved last year, and Danny Orr, who's with us then, that you can play a nice brand of football. Uh, it'll yeah. bite on the backside maybe sometimes, you've got to accept that. Yeah. Play a nice brand of football and, and do and create a, you know, an atmosphere for your fans and a game that, you, you, that they're going to thinking, oh, well, we can win here, you know, we can win differently and stylish you, stylishly. Yeah. I was very proud of the way the boys played last year. I thought it was tremendous. Well, I think Paul, Kurt, and Chris now. It'll be all well and good playing touchline to touchline, but you can only do that if the lads are willing to back it up on the other side of the ball, can't they? Yeah, yeah. And I think you just do it more than often yeah. than you just don't, don't you? So. Yeah. And the guys are, you know, I call them rugby geniuses. What, what they, you know, I kept saying to them last year, don't underestimate what you've done. It's tremendous. You know, we, we didn't have the best starts of the year. I'm hoping we get a better start this year. Yeah. We didn't have the best start, but 
the brand of football we were playing towards the back end was. Uh, so people have said to me, it's best thing, you know, Salford side since the seventies. They've seen seventies and probably not far off wrong. Some of the stuff. Could have said that's rude. I was in it in the nineties, mate. <laughs> I know we all listen. To that. Oh, this is no way you, you could yeah. compare to this. Yeah. These lads that nowadays, not a chance. You, you'd, you'd adapt with the situation. Yeah. You? And it's a different game, like we said, isn't it? Yeah. Totally different game, mate. Totally different game. Different, you know. But the, I think, you know, I was really, as I said, I'm really pleased with the way they uh, showed themselves up last year on the pitch. I thought they were they were really good in what they did and the way they applied themselves and how they carried themselves. I thought they were really true professionals last year. Yeah. Great. No, he's, he's a highly a pleasure to watch. But so the, the personality traits that you had, Playing, working, local authority, an agent, they all they all interact with all the roles could be anywhere and you've you're the same person and you've mm-hmm. took that into like now and you've managed to bring Mark home, even though you probably got the blame for him going and you know it, so how do you transpire into each of them roles and what what little changes do you have to make? I've always, uh, I've always been a fan of. Uh, it sounds weird, this. I've always been a fan of change. So I, know, I know it scares some people, but I quite I quite like organisational change and doing different things and unpicking things and rebuilding them up. Uh, to to some extent, uh, when I walked through the door, it was it was a bit it was a bit of a mess. To be fair, uh, yeah. I think it was well publicised as well, mate. Yeah, wasn't it was, it? It was, yeah. going in the wrong direction. And listen, you know, there's other people involved now that have, have done great jobs. Yeah. So it isn't just you know, it isn't just me this at all. It's taken six years to get where we are now. We're still not nowhere near where we need to get to as a club. And we're all aware yeah. of that. But I think we, we had to do a lot of things when I look back now at what we did to get where we are. We have we, there's been a lot of change change going on. And it never frightens me that. And if at some stage that that's me that has to change, that's that's it. That's that's the job. And I've always throughout my career, I've always managed to managed to do that I've always tried to apply myself to the role and make sure you give the best for what you can give so nothing like that's ever put me off when I walk, when I walk through the door I had some sleepless nights what I found and what I uncovered but yeah. well, we're, we're at a state now where I think we're we've managed to change people's perceptions I would say of, of us as a, not totally not totally yeah. but I think we're on that journey of changing people's perceptions that Salford don't bring much to the game and stuff like that. And that's not easy. That's not easy to do overnight. Yeah. And like I say, you know, I think I've been here six years, whatever it is now. We've still got a lot, a lot of work to do to get to there. We need to get more crowd. We need to do better commercially. We need to attract different people within the club to make sure that there's a legacy. I, I'm just keen on leaving whenever I leave is a better club than, than what it was when I came. And I think, I think, you know, if I walked out the door tomorrow, I think I'd be pleased Job with done. Pleased yeah. what we've done. Yeah. Yeah. But like I say, it's not finished yet. No. Nowhere near. Still a lot of work to be done. Uh, and it's pleasing when you do, even though we've not won anything, we've got to a grand final, we've got to a challenge cup, like I've said, and that's, can't keep dining out on them though, because like I say, if you keep looking backwards, you, you lose you lose sight of where you're going. Yeah. Uh, and we do, there's a drive and there's an ambition and you can feel it. And I've said it before, within the club. So hopefully something magical will happen. You never know. But yeah, that, yeah. you know, there's a lot of club. I've, I've said it to somebody yesterday. I think this year, Super League, will be the toughest Super League uh, since since its inception. I do. I, I was going to say that to you, to be honest with you. I think... One week link there now, John. Not yeah. Me. All right. London, maybe Toulouse and even Lee in the past were that, probably that little weak link there. I yeah. don't... They were probably just in between, weren't they? They were probably too good for the champ. Yes. But not quite good for Super League yeah. at times. No offence, so and yeah. Lee, you know, Lee have done some great signings. Yeah, so glad they're back in it, and we'll have some great games with them. Our fans love playing them, and they love playing us. I hope so. Mm-hmm. That we'll play them first game of the season, which will be really good. Yeah. So it, it's it'll be a great Super League this year, and the likes of, you know, fair to say, Warrington and Hull, who had disappointing seasons last year, won't have disappointing seasons this year. I'm convinced. Yeah. You know, again, they've recruited recruited well change their coaching staff in some instances. So yeah. everybody is on, is going to be on fire this year. So I'm really excited. Uh, and as I've said, we just need to make sure we get a good start because it's going to be a it's going to be a tough year, really yeah. hard year, really competitive year, which is great for the game. And that's what the fans want to see. Of course they do, yeah. And that'll bring the bums on seats, hopefully, mate. And yeah. 
So the only other thing, as I said, here really is the little landmarks that probably only the fans see that show the progress for Salford are probably pinching people that aren't even in the prime yet, but are still up there, players from mm. bigger clubs, mate, no effect. So you're only part in terms. Yeah. To complement the little gems you find, like Jacko, mm. like Broldy, who it was pretty apparent, might have lost a bit of love for the game and he's coming and done what he's done. And then Ryan looks a different player now he's with you guys. And like Akko does a good job when he steps in and all Chris and, yeah, it's just that all them little pieces, like you were saying about your academies, that maybe other clubs might have overlooked when you put them together, produce what you use are producing. And mm-hmm. so th- there's obviously more stuff than that behind the behind the scenes that contribute to the overall success. But when the fans see them sort of things, you must get people coming up to you absolutely buzzing with the business you do. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a lot more than anything, mate, if money. <laughs> <It's> a- yeah. <laughs> And I've said it. Bit of it is, though, Ian, isn't it? A bit of it is. I never, I never say good luck to people. I always say best wishes because I don't think there's luck. I think there's destiny yeah. in life. I do. I truly believe there's destiny. Great. I'm not going spiritually, by the way. I'm just. Saying. Oh, but everything happens for a reason. I believe I that. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a massive believer in, in things happen for a reason. There's, there's destiny. If you do the right things, you get the right people. You surround yourself with the right people's in, in, in people in life. Things got things happen for you. We were. We have been blessed with our signings, uh, and you've named them, a few of them there, you know, and uh, the likes of Gil Dudson and Lee Moss, yeah. and Mark Flanagan, and Tyrone McCarthy have been they've been fabulous to, to the current day. You, you've mentioned there with Ollie and Brode, Tim Laffey, and Kenny Seal has been a great signing for us. You know, so I could, yeah. without wanting to risk of not naming people, I could look at every. Team yeah. from 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, and say that great, 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 great. shrewd business right the way through. Yeah. We've not got it all. We've not got it all right, and I always say that yeah. to people. We've not got it all right. We, you know, we, 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 it's impossible. The great Alex yeah. Ferguson never got everything right, did he? I'm not saying. No. I'm not comparing myself to him. Just, <laughs> no, no, but we did sign him, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get it right sometimes. No, but it does. What I do always say, it does hurt us a little bit more when we don't get it right. So there's probably mm-hmm. there's work that goes on behind the scenes. And it doesn't happen without fabulous coaches. I've got yeah. to say that's it's all right picking them players out and dropping them in. That it, it's the guys who do the work behind the scenes here and the backroom mm-hmm. team. I've, and I've said it a million times. Absolutely fabulous. What that, the work that they do. If you could harness that, you could they become a millionaire overnight, mate. I'm telling you because the work they do is tremendous. Yeah. Um, and they build that 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 culture, that environment in there. Rolls is doing a fabulous job along with Kurt and now Chris and come and learn in the Salford way. Uh, and it does stem from the top, of course it does. But we have been we have been cute with our signings. Uh and I, and I, I won't use the word lucky, but there has been there's been destiny. Yeah. Uh, That's the way of putting it, yeah. I agree with that. To an announcement at the stadium throwing me out. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> uh, Sorry. <laughs> but, but no, it's all right, but uh I'm very proud of what we've done. And it's, yeah. you know, the signings we've made have taken this club to where it is now. It's not, like I said, I keep saying, it's, it's not where it needs to be yet. But, you know, we've done a, we've done a, a good job amongst us all at the moment. Yeah. And there's still room for improvement, definitely. And there's still better signings to come, I hope. And yeah. it makes, and I, I noticed when we did get to the 19 final that agents were calling me, throwing the players at me when I'm two years previous. Yeah, changed. so it's swinging, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it does. And that's natural, isn't it? You, you yeah. know, you'd think, You'd think that was happening, and it does. Uh, and Ollie's a great example this year. Did I think I would get Ollie when I started to go in for him? No, I didn't. I probably he's got a few good connections there with players, which was good. I get yeah. him his agent, and thankfully we've managed to get him. And I'm so excited to see him this year. Out of them all, you know, I can't wait to see Ollie in a Salford shirt. He's just what we need, I think. But again, I could be wrong. Uh, and it'll be great to see Brody and, and all the World Cup lads. Mark Sneed, Andy Ackers, who play for England, yeah. having. Great years last year. I think the, the 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 tough ask is: Can you do it again now, guys? Can you go again? Hopefully they can. They've got the yeah. temper, they've got the right attitude to do that again. When, when I, I know that's right, because when they come in asking what we're getting for winning grand finals and telling <laughs> you're doing you know, something right, man. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. I'm, I'm happy to have some conversations. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good sign. Yeah, they, they won't get carried away. They're great professionals, oh. and every yeah. club have got great. You know, every club will say it. We've all got great professionals. We have, mm. 
but it's it's good to see the chat around things like that rather than when you first come into a club you think wow this is like just how do I sort this yeah how do I sort this yeah but yeah. Uh, yeah it's been a good journey so far really good yeah. journey what I like as well you don't get bored of playing no so I you for a better use of a phrase you'll keep your head on someone's for uh, your foot on someone's throat yeah you start you start let up very often no. No, you just enjoy how you play, yeah. yeah. And you can see that, you know, and to play the way that we play, you, you've got to be, you've got to be fit, you've got to be strong, you've got to be tough yeah. as well. And uh, got to trust each other, mate, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And they do right. do, you know, they do, they, they do that well. I think. I think they got a good, yeah. a good atmosphere. Yeah. You, can, you can hear the banter and the laugh and the laughter, you know, on days. It's great to see in here on the training pitch. It's brilliant, and there's definitely something special brewing in the club. Yeah. And that it says it when players don't really want to leave now, did he? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think that sort of says what your culture's about now, mate. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just appreciate it and take a lot of your time. So, I've got a few daft questions for you here. All right, go on. Shoot. So, any pre-match superstitions? When I was playing? Yeah. I, I had a couple of things in me, in, me, in me locker that I used to touch and things like that. And then I used to go and say a little prayer. I'm not very religious, but for some yeah. reason... Uh, and my daughter does it now when she's uh, thinking just just yeah think little things like that nothing 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 major nothing major yeah. just little appetite pleasers yeah yeah so the toughest player you played with and against as in as in best or hat so, so like that. definition is different for everybody here and that's what I usually say so but me for toughness I'd probably I'd look at a winger that might carry hard out in a backfield yeah. or Someone that does them tough, unwanted carries. Yeah. T- toughest player ever played against, did you say? Yeah. Again. yeah. Kurt Sorensen was by far the toughest player I've ever played against. Mm. Wouldn't trust him not to gou- gouge your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, he was a tough guy. Yeah. You know, but when you flip it, best player was Elroy Hanley without, you know, without shadow. Yeah. And then, there's other great players that have played against you know, John Edwards, Andy Gregory, all, all the Wigan team, really. But Ellery was cut above the rest, mate. No doubt. So, your favourite away ground? <clears throat> Headingley. It's mega popular, Headingley. Is it? Is there just something about it, mate? Yeah. It made it even better now they've done it up. It's just yeah. had the other ground. And I think they went through a period of not playing or getting some results. And I always used to go and play there and play well because the facilities were great where you go yeah. to. The Willows or Halifax, for example, the shit, whatever it's called. From yeah. You, you know, you come out of there, you're like, oh, what? Yeah, you know, you've been there, don't you? Everything's beautiful. The pitch is yeah. beautiful. Everything about it is beautiful. Right. So if you're out with the lads, mate, you've had a few, you're bonding, the microphone ends up in Mr. Bleece's hands. Yeah. What are you giving us? The jam, town call malice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Class. <laughs> uh, I understand you played with a, a, a great players, mate. And if you don't want to do it, I do. I get it. But if you can say a one to thirteen that you played with, oh, yeah, all right, okay. Steve Gibson, full back. I'll go for <clears throat> one second, mate. Gibson. Yeah. Yeah. Wingers, Tex Evans, Adrian Hadley. I've got to be careful because some of them are on the group WhatsApp here. They'll be <laughs> you know, the centres. Uh, Goal for Martin Bernican, Sam Panapa, I think. Yeah. Half backs. I put Peter Williams as, as six. And I've always liked David Cairns, who was a, one of the first players when I joined the club from Barrow Cumbria. Steve Carey will go mad that I'm not picking him here, but anyway. Uh, props. Uh, there was a guy called Jeff Selby who, who, who actually died, but I think he was a might have been a back row, back row, but he was quality. Andy Platt was a good, great player. Yeah. Sort of. Matt Lee was my favourite hooker. Mick Worrell second row. Yeah. Uh, Arthur Bradshaw and Andy Burgess as my back row partners who were at that time. Yeah. That's right. A, thank you. That's a quick one off the top of my head without thinking really. Fair play to you. No, thanks very I much. I apologise to them lads who have not picked there, but yeah. <laughs> Terry O'Connor will go mad. I've not picked him. Yeah, not Willie Tess. Yeah, he'll go mad. 